Hello everyone, this is the conclusion to the Neumann NDH-20. It has been a very long road. It has taken us quite some time to finally reach this point. I could have reached a conclusion before today, but I wanted to wait for the Allo Audio S4R, and it took quite a while for me to get those headphones. But uh, today we finish the comparison, the audio comparison between the Allo and the Neumann, and now finally I can give you my impressions. Here's the bottom line the NDH20 at $500 is a ripoff. Let's be completely honest about this. Some people might say that I am wrong because Zeo's Pantera says these are the best headphones ever. I've had one commenter claim that I was misled and it is my fault for buying these headphones. Well, the problem is twofold, and I'll address each of the counter arguments to my position. Number one, Zeos is wrong. And number two, the individuals who think that I was misled are also wrong to the extent that they think it's my fault. People who purchase products based upon marketing and other reviewers' commentary who are subsequently misled by the commentary and the marketing, those individuals who purchase the products are not at fault. Those are not the individuals you should be blaming. It's like victim blaming in a, in a kind of way. You blame the victim for being a victim. You blame a victim for being victimized. Why were you a victim? Now, this is certainly not to the same extent. It's not even remotely in the same ballpark. But that's the only way for me to counter a ridiculous argument like you were misled and now this is your fault for buying the NDH-20. The NDH-20 are mischaracterized. They are not mixing and mastering headphones. They are not neutral. They are not flat. They do not replace a good set of stereo speakers. They will not replace a decent set of headphones. Do you see what I mean here? A good set of speakers can be found for $150, $250. You can buy the Canto-powered speakers on Amazon for, I think, $250, $300, something like that. They give you amazing sound quality for the price. You can buy a better pair of neutral-sounding, wider, more clear, more precise headphones than the NDH20 for one fourth the cost. Do you one fourth the cost? Which headphone am I talking about? Well, the one we discovered uh, several weeks ago, the NAD HP50, a pair of headphones that's all plastic build, that looks ridiculous, that sits ridiculous, that simply has no business competing with the monstrosity that is the NDH20. This tank, this behemoth made of metal and magnesium and all sorts of doodads. This thing engineered in Germany will beat the living crap out of the NDH or, or the NAD HP50 if it came to brute strength. But we're talking about finesse and we're talking about sound quality. And in those two respects, the NDH20 simply loses flat out. And if you disagree with me or if you have no idea what I'm talking about, go back and watch my comparison of the NDH20 versus the HP50. And I think that it's more than clear which one is the winner, hands down. But let's say you're not impressed with the HP50. Well, you also have another alternative, which is the Allo Audio S4R, another close back headphone. It's handmade. It's very sturdy. It looks, well, it looks good to some people. It, it sounds better than the NDH20. More clarity, much flatter response, more separation in the frequencies. And the NAD HP50 is of a similar, similar nature. So now you have two different headphones that beat the NDH20 
for one fourth the cost and about two hundred dollars cheaper if we're talking about the allo audio how do you explain that what do you say what can you say as a defender of the ndh20 as a defender of neumann as a defender of zeus pintera as a defender of anybody who's selling these headphones and saying these are amazing how do you explain that your only option therefore is to say that i am wrong that i don't know what i'm talking about okay to each their own opinion the problem with the ndh20 is that it is incapable of providing detail it simply doesn't reach that level it's rounded off treble frequency is great to listen to if you are extremely treble sensitive the slight bass boost is fun if you like a more intimate response if you want a little bit more bass but it's not to the extent that beats by any stretch of the imagination if you like midtones and you want to listen to the natural frequency of a vocalist these are good headphones to listen to smooth really sibilant free vocals if you can find them see that's the problem this headphone is really good for those little little things here and there no sibilance fantastic headphones if you like a slight boost in the bass but not overwhelming good headphones you don't like treble you want it rolled off again the ndh20 does a great job but in the combination of all of those three factors you get a headphone that simply isn't flat it simply doesn't do what other people claim it to do and that's the problem you can't have as a mixing and mastering artist you can't sit there and put on a pair of headphones like the NDH 20 and expect that you're going to end up mastering a song that is consistent to what you intended it to be the example I gave in an earlier video today is you you want the vocals to stand out a little bit and because the NDH 20 smooths out the vocals and there's a little curve a little dip and the vocals are slightly stepped back from the rest of the mix you boost that vocal and then you reduce the mix with respect to the other instruments and you master that and it gets sent out and somebody who doesn't have the NDH 20 who has a different pair of headphones like the Sennheiser HD 600 or the 650 or uh, uh, an odyssey headphone or a sony headphone or a beats headphone or anything else that's mass produced they're going to hear something vastly different from what the individual who put on the ndh20 and mastered with the ndh20 what that person heard and that's the underlying crux of the problem you cannot in my opinion you cannot use a tool that constantly fights against you no matter how much you may want to like it no matter how much you may want to say this is the best tool in the world for me because i love the curves i love the fact that this is handmade i love the fact that it's all steel i love the fact that it looks so neat great if it fights you then it's not really a tool a tool is something that helps you complete the task not something that hinders you from completing your task it's the total opposite and i think that's what the ndh20 basically is it's the total opposite of being a helpful tool it doesn't take your and and this is i'm not a mixing or mastering artist so i can't say definitively my impression is the following that if you use the ndh20 you will end up having to eq a whole lot to get these headphones to work the way you want them to work and if you're a true master uh, at your job you can easily do this if you are good at eq you're really good with sonar works programs you're really good at tweaking headphones and you you will probably be able to find a way to make things these work but if you are that capable why would you ever waste your time with the ndh20 when there are alternatives that are better and cheaper it, no i i find it hard to believe that a real professional is going to spend so much time and effort to make a tool work in the right way 
or in the best way possible where alternatives exist that simply don't require that type of effort. So the NDH20 is simply not it. Stereo studio grade monitoring wherever you go is Neumann's shtick. And I'll read it in my most radio voice. Ready for this with the pop filter on? The Neumann NDH20 is a closed back headphone combining excellent isolation with a carefully balanced sound image and outstanding resolution you'd expect from a Neumann product. The NDH20 is thus ideally suited to monitoring and mixing tasks, even in loud and noisy environments. Circumboral memory foam ear pads offer high long term comfort. Critical listening and mixing in the studio at home on the road. While many other closed back headphones are marred by nasty resonances in the mid-band, making it difficult to come to reliable mixed decisions, the NDH20 offers an astonishingly detailed, well-balanced soundstage, similar to Neumann's acclaimed studio loudspeakers. Superior sonics along with large memory foam ear pads make the NDH20 a pleasure to wear for long periods without fatigue. What a load of crock. So whether or not it's comfortable is a personal preference. I find these headphones to be agreeable. They're not the most comfortable I've ever worn. They're not the most uncomfortable I've ever worn. And after a while, you get used to them. But they certainly aren't great for long periods of listening without fatigue. I, I wouldn't say that. And I think if you go online and you read users' reviews, uh, many people are going to say the same thing. How about this, this really weird statement by Neumann that they say that their headphones, the NDH20, isn't marred by nasty resonance into the mid-band because you scooped out the mid frequency but you still have nasty resonances in the lower frequency and in the treble region you have a hard time reproducing accurate piano you have a hard time uh, separating uh, multiple instruments in a mix if that's not a nasty resonance i don't know what is Making it difficult to come to a reliable mixed decision, yeah, I would agree that's exactly what the NDH20 would do. Astonishingly detailed, well-balanced sound image? I don't think so, because we know what well-balanced is. We've seen the graphs. This is not a balanced headphone. This is not a flat headphone. Maybe that's what they mean. Maybe that, maybe that is exactly what they mean. If you go back to Sonarworks' frequency response chart for the NDH20, maybe they don't mean flat, because they don't say flat. They say well-balanced. Now, you may be misled into thinking that means, oops, I hit the microphone. You may be misled into believing that means flat. It, it doesn't say flat. It says well-balanced. So I guess that's true. There's a peak here, and then there's a peak here, and there's basically nothing here. So you're right. It's balanced. It's like a seesaw. You know, if you, if you ever sat on a seesaw, this is what a seesaw looks like, and here's the fulcrum of the seesaw right here. So you're right. I guess it is well-balanced. Way to go, Neumann. Way to use linguistics to your benefit. But this is not true. The, the idea that they're trying to implant in your mind is that these headphones are going to give you true, accurate sound, but it's simply not the case. Superior Sonics. I, again, I, that's a, first of all, that is a personal opinion that somebody else can reach. It is not a fact of life especially if you look at the scientific data. It is ideally suited to monitoring and mixing tasks, even in loud and noisy environments. I would agree with that to the extent that these headphones really do close off the rest of the universe around you. But that's how they sound, too. They close off the rest of the universe around you. And you feel as if you're sitting inside one of two places, a shipping container or a mental asylum locked inside your own padded room. That's how the NDH20 represents itself, in my opinion, based upon the many, 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 many listening tests I've done, compared these to other headphones. That's how they present themselves. The applications portion, I think this is relevant to go over really quick. Again, my most studio voice I can come up with. Here we go. <clears throat> 
the NDH20 is suited to all applications that require high sound isolation, such as monitoring for musicians and engineers in the tracking room, as well as FOH work. It is also an excellent choice for critical listening, free from disturbance from the outside world and vice versa without causing disturbance to people nearby due to leakage. Thanks to its extended frequency response ranging from 5 Hz to 30 kilohertz, the NDH-20 is particularly helpful to check the upper and lower extremes of the audio band. What kind of insane person wrote this? 5 hertz to 30 kilohertz. You can't hear that. You cannot hear below 20 hertz. It's practically impossible to do that. And you cannot hear over 20,000 hertz or 20 kilohertz. It, it's not impossible to do that. There are some people that do vary a little bit, but nobody can hear to 30 kilohertz. There is not a single person on this planet that hears to 30 kilohertz. Either you have dog-type listening, or you are a mutant from the X-Men. There is no way you are going to be able to hear this range. That is ridiculous. This is a misstatement. It is misguided, and I would complain to a certain extent. Perhaps it is indeed a lie. Misleading. Helpful to check the upper and lower extremes of the audio band. It simply can't do that. You can't do it. Unless, of course, you pump these headphones with so much raw power that you can eke out all the details. And I wouldn't recommend doing that. Because, number one, it's a dangerous road where you lose your hearing and you can destroy the drivers, and you have to spend a lot more money getting a much more powerful amplifier to do it. So, there you go. I, I, I may sound very harsh on the NDH-20, and I probably am, to be frank about it. I'm being harsh with them because they deserve to be treated harshly, at least for the marketing here. And, and, I, and I think it's also... I think it's also acceptable to be harsh towards individuals who have shilled this product as a mixing and mastering wonder boy. It, it is not. In my opinion, it doesn't come remotely close to doing what booth junkies, artists who are mixing and mastering, what they really want to do. Especially if you're the, the type of person that you're independent. You have your laptop, you have your guitar, you have your other whatever instrument that you're playing with. You have your software and you mix in and you're working really hard to make a name for yourself and you just want something that works. And all of a sudden you buy yourself the NDH-20 because you heard so many good things about it. Now you're going to have to work even harder because you're, you're, not, you're not getting it. You're not getting the detail that you thought you would. And you're certainly not getting the type of response that Neumann pretends these headphones are going to give you. Bottom line, I disagree that these headphones are for mixing and mastering or critical use. I don't think that they are. They don't provide the detail. However, these headphones may in fact be very good for a more intimate, smooth, I was going to say natural, but not natural, intimate, smooth, and relaxed listening experience. These are really good for that. If you want to listen to jazz music and have an intimate experience, NDH-20, really good. If you want to close off the rest of the world, NDH-20. If you want something that is smooth across the board, no matter what you pick, NDH-20, other than piano, NDH-20. But at $500, $500, you can do better elsewhere. You can find much cheaper alternatives. If you want soundstage, you want clarity, you want definition, you want detail, you can do a whole lot better for less money. Bottom line, end of the day, I cannot recommend the NDH-20 for mixing and mastering. I'm not a mixing and mastering guy. I, I, I have a hard enough time mixing my vocals into a video. But... I, I simply cannot suggest to anyone that these things are detail kings. 
nor are they bass kings, as some people have commented. Nor are these headphones particularly good at any particular thing other than being smooth and relaxing. Not to the same extent as some other headphones that I have, like Odyssey's, uh, which would be you know kind of smooth and relaxing. Um, or the AudioQuest Nighthawk. But uh, these are fairly good for chilled out music. Not so good for anything else. Thank you so much for watching and commenting, and I hope that uh, this is helpful to other people. That if you're in the market for the NDH20, this will help you decide whether these headphones are for you. These aren't bad headphones. They're simply not good for what it's being marketed to do. And even if you are in the market for smooth sounding headphones, $500 is a lot to ask. And in my opinion, it, it, this would be an easier pill to swallow at $350 than at $500. So if you find some headphone, if you find the NDH20 and this is the sound signature you're looking for, I would suggest that you find it around $350 at most that you'd be willing to pay. That may require you waiting a long time to happen, but that's saving money in the long run. Thank you so much. I hope everyone has a wonderful Tuesday. By the way, one last thing. Somebody suggested that I open up my test playlist to everybody to uh, to listen to. And it, it, great idea. I should have done it a long time ago. So in the comments down below, not in the comments, in the, uh, com in the description down below. That's what I meant to say. In the description down below, from now on, is going to be my... Uh, methodology for you to, to access the test playlist on Spotify. You just search in my user account name and there will be my test playlist. I made it public so you can take a gander and take a look at that if you want or you can make your own. It's totally up to you. Have a wonderful day. Thank you so much once again. Take care.